All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the War Games podcast. Uh, why is it special? Well, A.A. Ron's here, and he automatically makes things special. Uh, but no, seriously, this is uh, very much so not the norm uh, for us to be able to have A.A. Ron joining us. As you guys know, he works a lot. Um but he is on vacation right now, so he is actually able to join us for a podcast. Also, uh, with us tonight is McCoy, Locke, and of course, Patty. Um, so what are we doing tonight? Uh, tonight's kind of a catch all podcast, if you will. Um, it's the end of the year, we're wrapping up 2018, and uh, Yeah, I guess we're going to do kind of a year-end summary, if you will, for the podcast. I'm just going to talk about what's been going on in our lives for the past fucking 12 months, what's been going on with the unit, and just gaming in general, so on and so forth. Um, That being said, as you guys notice, there is just a black box on the screen right now. That is because, for some reason, my, uh, my screen capture has decided to just stop working. Uh, so I made that little thing for you guys. Uh, so yeah, enjoy the error message there. Not sure what the gig is. I'll have to fix it after the stream goes down. I didn't realize it until I already fired the stream up and I didn't want to shut it down and restart it and all that bullshit. So you don't get any pictures, just our sweet dulcet tones. So all of that, uh, intro and so on and so forth out of the way, uh, to also remind you guys and we'll be bringing it up a couple of times throughout the podcast. The winners for the Christmas giveaway are going to be announced tonight. Uh, The three prizes that I've announced already are the Schematar gaming mouse, the exact same mouse that I use, the uh, K95 keyboard, which is the upgraded version of what I use, as well as a HyperX Cloud 2 headset, which I don't personally use. I've had one before, and it is always my go-to number one recommended headset for anybody. Uh, so those three things will be given away as well as a fourth and final huge prize, uh, for one very lucky person. And that'll be announced after we announce the other winners in terms of, uh, who's going to get that big prize. And believe me, any of you guys will be fucking ecstatic to receive this thing. So that being said, uh, let's kind of get this podcast going, if you will. Um, 2018 been a, uh, been a long fucking year for sure. A lot of crazy shit has happened, uh, for pretty much all of us. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I moved a couple of times. You guys know I'm in a new place now, or at least most of you know, I'm in a new place now, new internets and all of that good stuff. Um, but first thing I want to talk about is gaming. What's gone on this year for gaming? Uh, so I guess I'll kind of go down the line here. Um, McCoy, for you, what's the what's the kind of first thing that pops out to you this year for gaming? What's like the one thing from 2018 that instantly pops into your head in terms of gaming? Well, I guess just based on recent events, I've been playing a lot of Star Citizen. God rest my soul. Uh, <laughs> as frustrating as it is, it's still super fun. I mean, I've always been a huge uh, Chris Roberts fan. Like Wing Commander was like my first game ever on like four floppy disks on the fucking Amiga. So I have like a nostalgic quality to that. But yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty much the one game that I've been really keeping an eye on. It's still a lot of fun. Um, I've been really busy with work. So like as far as gaming, like Arma and like I've been playing a little Eve with Patty and Ro as well. But uh, yeah, I mean... I'm not too, not too up on the gaming stuff, but yeah, Star Citizen is probably the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, there's been a lot of progress made on that. Um, I mean, I know I was talking to a couple of people about it, you know, in terms of the performance, uh, I guess, upgrades kind of that they've made since the last time I played it. Um, you know, the last time I played it, I was struggling to get like 20 FPS, which, you know, with my machine <laughs> is not good. Um, but I've been told a lot of that has been rectified. Uh, so it is something that I'll end up getting back into at some point. Um, you know, it's something that I personally don't really do that much with uh, simply because 
there isn't really a ton to do right now, and I kind of rely on uh, you guys and Drum and shit like that to get my info on it. You know, every few months or so, Drum will give me kind of an update on what's going on with the game. Plus, you know, I get the emails and see the YouTube videos and all of that. Um, but yeah, that'll definitely be one that hopefully will also be sticking out for a lot of us next year. Uh, obviously, I don't think it'll be released next year or anything like that, but uh -huh. I... I definitely look forward to some big advancements in 2019. Yeah, I guess like now that I think more about it, I'm I'm really I'm more looking forward to Squadron 42. Like that's actually why yeah. I got Star Citizen because like that is that's like the classic. Basically, it's basically a Wing Commander remake, right? And so, do you yeah. uh, do you need to go somewhere? You got fucking uh, one time at your door? No, it's just good old New York City. About to get fucking locked up by the police. Um, whoop, whoop. yeah, the sound of the police. It's, I've had people ask me why the fuck I always say it is police, and I'm like, I don't know, it's just because that's how we say police in the ghetto. You say police, and the police, just, just how we say it, I guess. Um, all right, so I think Locke's uh still AFK, he stepped next door. Um, Patty, what about for you? What stands out in 2018 in terms of gaming for you? Uh, as far as gaming goes, I'd have to say, I feel like this has been a year of hype more than anything. Like, it's kind of like the New York Giants season. This was kind of like a shitty season, so we're already looking forward to next year. Yeah. Um, so like, I'm kind of looking, actually, it's weird enough. I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast. I'm really looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, in 2019. So this past few months, I've been playing through all the Kingdom Hearts games, trying to get back into that because i haven't played a kingdom hearts game since i was probably 16 17 18 years old and so now like i'm getting all excited for what's coming up um so that in my opinion this has just been a year of gaming hype like things have come out <laughs> we've been let down we've been kind of pushed back up there's kind of like been a few like misses and then there's been a couple like small hits but i don't think i can't say there was anything major this year that said holy shit this game was 2018 yeah, I I can I can understand that for sure, and also sorry for uh, coughing on your guys' ear there. Um, How fucking dare you? I know, right? Such a dick. Uh, very quickly though, uh, Liquid, thank you a ton, bro, for that sixteen month resub. I know it's crazy that it's been sixteen months already. Um, the real quickly to I guess touch back on Star Citizen for you guys. Um, Star Citizen is something that down the road we're looking to do large scale like what we do with Arma. That's kind of a natural progression for us, depending upon what, you know, their capabilities are going to be and stuff like that. So, yes, there is potential that you will see, you know, the 506 doing operations like what we do in Arma, but in Star Citizen, depending upon the capability of that system. Um, so back to Patty. Uh, so this has felt kind of like a build up year for you. Has there, I guess, is there anything that, that came out this year that where there was hype and it was just kind of a letdown for you? Like, was there, was there anything that just failed to fucking deliver for you this year? Uh, trying to think of what games i picked up because the, the, gaming when, nowadays i i don't buy every game that that comes out i get excited for i don't normally wait on some stuff but uh i have to say i don't know maybe some battlefield but uh, i've always, i was a big fan of the battlefield um the battlefield world when i was back in college and uh, after battlefield 4 i kind of fell off the bandwagon i was kind of happy to see them go back to their their roots with you know world wars so I, I guess that i kind of like it made me feel like i was you know playing battlefield again like original battlefield yeah uh, i yeah i can understand that um pi i'm not really sure what you're talking about in terms of the tos not releasing financial info because every single backer of star citizen was just recently sent an email with total breakdowns and links to every penny that's gone in and out of that company. So, I mean, you may not see it if you're not a backer, but I know all of us that have backed the game received that email breaking down yep. every single dime that's gone in there. 
Um, so, uh, I know real quickly to touch on Battlefield, I just want to mention real quick, you know, we had the new family of cards come out, the new uh, RTX family from NVIDIA. And Battlefield currently is the only live game that has real-time ray tracing enabled. And, you know, whether you want to look at it as hype or, you know, overpriced fucking shininess, whatever, say what you will, I cannot deny the fucking beautification that RTX gives to that game. Holy fucking balls. Like, I watched yeah. Jay's Two Cents video of him doing some RTX testing and so on with Battlefield, and it was probably the most gorgeous game I have ever seen with the addition of all of those reflections. And, like, when he walks into the room that has the marble floors, I was blown away by it. I could not believe it. Um, So, it... It's impressive visually. Um, it's not a game that I personally would get into, but that's just you know personal preferences. Um, so, Ooh. I, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, go ahead. I there is something that that I was actually much more impressed with than I thought I was going to be. Uh, Battlefield Two, uh, single player, the campaign. I was very happy with that. The, sorry, the single player campaign for what? For battle or uh, Battlefront Two. Sorry, Battlefront Two. Oh, I didn't even know they ended up doing a single player campaign for it. Or wait, was that the uh, one where you play as the Imperial chick? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, I, I did I know that because with... I was actually surprised at it because when I seen the, uh, I guess the cinematics for it for when they were announcing it, I seen the character and I was like, God damn, that chick looks familiar as fuck, which is weird to say from a video game. And then I looked into it and sure enough, she was... Uh, she was on the show True Blood that me and Sid watched for a long time. Uh, and I was like, that's where I fucking know her face from. It, it's oh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, she was, the were, she was the werewolf chick. Yeah. And, like, it's crazy to me that it's in Star To go back to Star Citizen, you know, you have Mark Hamill and fucking so many huge actors in that game. But it's crazy to me that, like, face capture and motion capture has gotten so good at this point. I can recognize an actor in a video game from something I've seen them do real action. Like, that's insane. Right. Well, I mean, with like the history of, you know, the Chris Roberts games, uh, Mark Hamill has yeah. always been like the yep. main character. Like with Wing Commander 3, that was like a revolutionary concept to have live action cutscenes with real actors like in the middle of the game. So yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty, pretty yeah. cool how they've like pushed it forward. We had good old, at least as far as a triple A title goes, I guess. Yeah, we had good old Michael Ironside and guys like that in C and C back in the day. So that's true. that's true. Um, oh hey, and look at that—a wild fucking Ford appears in chat. Hopefully, you are uh, doing well. Uh, so hey, Ron, how about you, man? What's uh, what stands out for you this year in terms of gaming? Uh, I would say probably the the number one thing that really stands out would be the epic failure of Fallout 76, which I, I, I'm i not going to say necessarily surprised me. I, I guess some of the the later things that happened with it did, as far as it dropping in price so significantly and things like that. I, I knew it was going to be pretty much a flaming pile of garbage. and But like that, that really stands out to me, the, the absolute hype and then downfall and controversy of that hot piece of garbage like that, yeah. that kind of defines 2018 for me yeah that one it's definitely one that'll st stand out for a while uh yeah fucking flaming pile of garbage is a pretty good description for it um i mean i think to me more so than even the bugs, the problems that they had with it, so on and so forth. The slap in the face that Bethesda gave all of their uh, fucking consumers, whatever, everybody that bought the game, the slap in the face of putting that game on sale two weeks after release. I, I couldn't believe that. Like, yeah, and not just a sale, like 40% off. 
Yeah, like that was absolutely insane to me. I yeah, I, I don't know. Um, all right. So I don't know if I don't think Locke is back yet. Uh, for me, the biggest standout of the year has got to be mostly related to Battlefront, but more so related to the growing, uh, you know, loot box scandal type bullshit and the, you know, investigations and the lawsuits and the new commissions that are being built and new laws and stuff that are being passed around gaming all because of this potential, you know, gambling and issues that it's causing. And I can say more so now that I can understand the concern with it. I mean, obviously there's obvious concern and then there's the stuff that many of us don't or may not realize as much now having my nephews in the house and they're both, you know, early teens and seeing how easily they can get drawn into that and like begging my brother for money so they can buy this skin in a game like that. Now it's hitting close to home before I couldn't really quantify it because it's like, yeah, I'm not going to spend real money, you know, on a game that I've already bought. It makes no sense to me, but like seeing like how much of a hold that has on them, I can understand it more. So, so that for me more than anything else is what stands out for 2018 in terms of a year of gaming is just the huge controversy around loot boxes and microtransactions and all of that bullshit. I had actually kind of forgot about that. And that, that actually, yeah, that is, that was a huge thing for, it kind of dropped off a little bit near the end of the year, but yeah, that's a, a pretty big revelation for the gaming industry. It, it was pretty hard to, think about the loot box controversy when fallout 76 was literally going down in a fucking you know firing fiery ball well yeah. i think the big one was star Wars, like the new star wars right it's battle uh battlefront 2 right that was like when it really first became like mainstream headlines right yeah pretty much the thing that surprised me the most about all of that is you know, there's it was a huge deal that it was loot boxes and random chances and so on, but that's not really what, at least to me, the most vocal people were bitching about. It was that the things that people were buying had direct effect on the game. Okay, so if that's the main problem that everybody had, why was nobody flipping out about GTA 5? Like, those guys skated under the radar so fucking cleanly despite the fact that they've been doing the same thing for years with the shark cards and yeah people have bitched about it and so on but people were more pissed off when they tried shutting down 5m than anything to do with shark cards and to me that's just as blatant as the shit that ea pulled with battlefront so i i i don't understand how gta 5 got away so cleanly like Star Wars fans like love to complain about stuff. So I mean, I mean, pe- <laughs> that's a given. People love to complain about stuff. That's I mean, look at again to go back to GTA Five and when they tried shutting down Five M, people instantly started review bombing GTA on Steam, and in a matter of twelve hours, it went from overwhelmingly positive to overwhelmingly negative in twelve hours. Like, that's how quickly people were like, yeah, fuck you. You're trying to shut down something that we love about this game. But nobody was mentioning them in terms of the microtransaction shit. It was very surprising. Uh, I feel like uh, like cell phone games have kind of desensitized a lot of people to microtransaction stuff in games because, I mean, I don't think I've never played a, a game on a phone that doesn't have some sort of microtransaction, you know, Mm-hmm. like thing attached to it pay to win element yeah yeah uh, or, they, or even pay to progress like even if it's not pvp obviously like pvp stuff would be like i hate that shit you know but yeah i think it's just become so commonplace like we see it every day like you know it's but on the big big games like pc stuff that it's kind of starting to bleed into that now yeah and and hey, Storm Rise, we're just doing our uh, doing our kind of special edition podcast here. Um, the 
me and my brother were talking about this uh, the other night because obviously me and my brothers are all older. Uh, you know, we've grown up gaming pretty much our entire lives. And my brother plays a lot of World of Tanks. And he was bitching about guys with premium premium accounts and using premium ammo and this and that and spending, you know, real life money in game and so on and so forth. And I was like, dude, that's just that's the free to play model. Like, that's how all free to play games are like it's foreign for people like us, but that's just the norm now. I mean, it's not that foreign for me because I am so engrossed in the gaming culture at this point, uh, much more so than he is. But it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's acceptable practice for free to play games now is it's pay to win, man. Uh, so the, I guess kind of gaming, well, part of the gaming stuff, I still want to talk about, uh, some of our kind of highlights for the year from the unit. Um, the other thing I want to talk about here for a little bit is, what originally we were going to talk about on this podcast, this podcast was originally going to be purely about cars because me and a Ron are huge gearheads. Um, so I want to touch on that subject for a little bit here. Uh, reason being one, like I said, we're into cars, but two recently I seen a video on YouTube of them testing the new CR eight, which is our C eight R whatever the fuck it is, uh, which is the new mid engine Corvette. If you guys haven't seen this thing, fucking go look it up. It is sexy as fuck. Um, they were testing it at Sebring, and to me, this core, like I said, it's mid-engine. We don't really know much info on it. Everybody's theorizing that it's a flat plane V8, uh, twin turboed, much like the Ferrari 458 and 488. Um, it to me looks like a Corvette and a Ferrari 488 had sex and this was the result um it is absolutely beautiful some guys are hating on it because they hit they don't like the engine note of it i think it sounds fucking gorgeous yes it doesn't sound like a big fucking rumbling v8 like the c7s uh but it's a fucking mid-engine corvette that is going to still be able to keep up with the big boys in gt2 or gte whatever the fuck you want to call it uh, or gtlm or whatever the class is. Uh, so I know a Ron also seen the video. I'm, is that what you just linked in chat there? Is that video? Yep. Uh, so a Ron's seen it. I know you're a big fan of it. Uh, have any of you guys, other guys seen it? I know Patty, you just looked it up right before we went live here. I'm probably yeah, watching it photo. right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, absolutely gorgeous like i was saying before we went live i seen a mock-up of it in the imsa yellow and red colors uh which for those of you guys that don't know i am a big endurance racing fan um i don't really watch uh like nascar or f1 or any of the real big series but i do follow imsa as well as the Le Mans series so endurance racing is what i'm all about and imsa especially you know corvettes the Corvettes and the Fords are kind of synonymous with, uh, with IMSA. Well, especially the Fords now that they brought back the GTs, but that Corvette, you know, the racing yellow with the red accents, it's like a very iconic, uh, setup for those cars. And that C8R or CR8, whatever the fuck it is. Um, it looks absolutely gorgeous in the IMSA colors. Like I cannot wait to see that thing ripping around fucking Daytona next month. It, I, it's going to be so awesome. Well, the, the, if it's ready. The the one I would say complaint I would have with it is I wish that GM would have called it something else. I, I think calling it a Corvette is an insult to the name of Corvette because it is mid-engine. And that is completely against Corvette doctrine. Like that That, that, that takes it away from being... You know, that American style muscle car that it started out being and now makes it more of the uh, European supercar, mm. which I think loses, you know, a bit of that Corvette heritage. Right. So I, it's I a little bit of saying. a sacrilege in that, you know, it's hard to believe that that thing was built in Kentucky. Yeah, that's I can understand that. I I wouldn't have been uh, upset if they would have made it a whole new family of car. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it, there wouldn't have been any harm whatsoever 
and tagging it with a different name. The thing where I guess I'm more inclined to agree, agree with you is especially considering that the new family of Corvettes are a damn good looking car and they're a very good car. Like it's not just looks, it does handle well. It does perform well. If they would have, you know, say gone mid engine back in the early two thousands or even the mid two thousand before they introduced this new body style, I think I would have been, you know, more inclined to disagree with you. But now that the Corvette is good again, yeah, it makes more sense that they, you know, they could have introduced it as a new family of cars. Yep, yeah, and they they wouldn't have had to change anything about it. They could have left the Corvette rear end on it, and you know whatever else they wanted to, you know, bring over from the Corvette. But they could have just, you know, thrown a different name on it, and it would have been, you know, the mid engine built in the U.S. They should have. It, it wouldn't have had to been a Corvette. They should have gone the uh, the route of you know all the revivals with the the Charger and the Challenger and uh, so on. They should have revo- revived the Corvair. There you go. <laughs> it would have worked, man. They could have called it the Corvair. Granted, it's or, not as sexy or, or, or sounding as Corvette. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. No, I don't think I'd have been okay with them calling it a Nova. I don't know, man. Two plus two, man. Yeah. I don't know. I think in, in this day and age, it probably wouldn't have killed them to come out with a brand new name for, for this. Like it, it it doesn't even look like a vet. So like, no, the taillights to... are the only thing Corvette on it. I mean, I guess the well, front yeah, clip but, looks know. a little bit like a C7, but not much. Yeah. Well, my, my uncle's truck has got the fucking Corvette or not the Corvette, the fucking Mustang engine in it. You don't call it a Mustang. Mm. Eh. I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I don't personally, I don't give a shit what they call it. If it wins races, like if they can pull a Ford and go out there and win Le Mans this year, then I'll be happy as fuck. But at the same time, I don't want to see Ford lose because I've now fallen in love with that team, uh, specifically because of what they did, what they pulled off. You know, they built a car in basically a year and a half, two years, went back to Le Mans on the 50th anniversary and fucking won. After a whole season of problems, you know, they went to Daytona at the start of the season. Neither car was able to finish the race. It was just problem after problem. And then they slowly started picking up and picking up and building steam up to Le Mans. And they said from day one, our goal with this car is to go back to Le Mans 50 years later and win. And that's exactly what they did. And like even myself, like I got emotional watching that fucking race and watching a Ford cross that finish line in first place 50 years after they did it and that was the last time they were at le mans was 50 years prior when they won so that was a big deal years to win the first time yeah (laughs) yeah yeah and like if you guys have never seen the documentary on that uh, i believe it's called the return uh which is all about the uh the building of the new ford gt not the shitty one that they did in like 2005 the new one that looks like the angry birds pig in the back um that yes has a fucking v6 from essentially a pickup truck in it uh but it's all about them designing the car building it and then the lead up to le mans and winning there in 2016 which like i said was was a big deal for especially us racing fans for a us based team to you know, the Ganassi racing to go there and win what is arguably the biggest race of any race series in the world. Um, that's a big deal. I mean, that's like fucking Daytona 500 on steroids. And if you're going to look that up and you're not familiar with the first time that Ford did this, go look up what they did when they brought out yeah, the GT40 they, originally when to they try to go beat, beat the shit Ferrari. out of Ferrari. Yeah. It legitimately took them, what, six or eight years, six, I think? Yep, six years. It took them to win it the first time, and they took one, two, and three. Yep. And that's when the legend of the fucking GT40 was born. That was the GT40 Mark IV. Um, well, I guess talking about cars and so on, A, Ron kind of briefly touched on it uh, before we went live. Anytime you get car guys around each other, you uh, you always inevitably end up coming to this fucking debate uh, or this topic, and that is everybody's fucking dream car. 
Uh, so we'll go down the line here. And since I'm the host, I'll be last. Uh, McCoy, what is it? What's your one fucking money, no object car? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know, man. I, I have, I have a very you only get one. Case. I know. I've already. I've actually been lucky enough to own my dream car already, and I've sold it since then. Uh, and that was a Subaru. How dare you? Guy. I'm a big rally car guy. Oh, I love Subarus. I personally like the Evos a little bit more, but I, I yeah, get that, down that, on was, the Subaru. that was always that was always the hot debate. But I think some of the functionality, like some of the features in the STI, made it a, felt it felt a little more mature than the Evo, even the, though technically it was like on paper a little better. The only thing that would make me take a Subaru over an Evo is if it was the, what was it, 96 or whatever Subaru that Colin won his last championship with. Like that to me, that's the epitome of rally car is that Subaru. You know, the fucking, the car that coined the phrase or that made the man that coined the phrase, you know, when in doubt, flat out. I mean, that is Colin McRae. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, well, the one feature, too, that really sold me on the STI over the Evo was that it has a full driver-controlled center differential, like, so you can switch it to 90% rear wheel, yeah, uh, and then multiple degrees up to full 50-50 lock, and it has a, a water intercooler button that you can push when you're getting to the top of the red line. That, I don't know, that car was super fun to drive. So, uh, what, great. what made you sell your dream car? Oh, I moved to New York, man. I don't need a car here. I needed money. I'll get another one one day. Yet another reason for me to fucking hate New York. Yeah, <laughs> he, he had to sell that car to get, you know, three packs of smokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, all right, so Subaru STI for McCoy. Uh, Locke, I know you're not really much of a car guy, but do you have kind of a money, no object dream car? Yeah, I don't really know much about cars, but... Um... I've always been partial to the Acura NSX, I guess. Oh, I don't such know a good much, car. Yeah, I don't know much about it, but it looks pretty sweet, and I, I'm guessing it goes pretty fucking fast. <laughs> it, it's definitely on, like, about the top 30 list of prettiest cars oh, yeah. ever. It's yeah. an amazing car. Honestly, one of my favorite videos of all time on YouTube is that video of Ayrton Senna uh, heel and towing in NSX around, uh, I think it was Subaru... I can't remember for sure which circuit it was. It was one of the Japanese circuits. But he's in there in like leather Italian loafers, heel and towing a fucking NSX like a Honda has never been driven before. I mean, you have one of the greatest of all time drivers in this NSX just ringing that thing out for everything it's got. And it's one of the sexiest videos that could possibly be on YouTube without getting removed for fucking pornography. Right. I was on the line between that and saying like a top of the line um, Tesla, but I figured that'd piss people off. So, those fucking Teslas are rowdy, man. You're talking yeah, to a fucking like drag. You're talking to a drag racer. I can appreciate instant torque. Yeah, no I, doubt. I appreciate those things, man. I've watched a couple of 1320 videos where those things are beating up on some boys with some pretty rowdy fucking cars, man. And that Tesla spanks them. Their top speed isn't um, as good as like the other cars, right? It's no, just no, acceleration. Yeah. Yeah, it's just pure acceleration because it's instant fucking torque. Like, it, there is no revs. It's just, oh, you have 700 foot pounds now. Right. And also, you know, all wheel drive. Like, it's fucking, it's insane. Well, in the vein of uh, electric cars, though, which this one isn't purely electric, it's a hybrid, but that would be Porsche 918. Yeah. Yeah, the 918 will forever go down as one of the greatest cars of all time. Uh, I mean, all three of them, you know, the Trinity, the 918, the P1, and the LaFerrari. Uh, although now they have the Senna, which hopefully we're going to see. I'm pretty sure they are driving it on Grand Tour this year. Hey, Ron, do you know? I, I don't know. They, they've been so hush-hush about season three. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know... it took us how long to find out the actual fucking release yeah. date. I know they've already driven it on Top Gear, so I'm assuming they have to... You know, the Grand Tour guys have to fucking one-up them. So they got to be driving the center this year. Um, right. Uh, Wu-Tang says in chat, Jeff Gordon, greatest of all time. Uh, no. Mm, far from it. I, don't get me wrong. Jeff Gordon has incredible talents. I've seen him drive more than just a stock car. The guy can definitely drive. But I would not put him in the same category as Prost or Senna or, you know, 
I, mean, I wouldn't even Reich... put him in the same category as Stewart. Tony yeah. Stewart is a driving motherfucker. Like hiking in, you know, some of the great rally drivers, you know, they may not be as well known. Senna is probably the most well known in terms of like race enthusiasts. Senna is probably the most well known. Uh, but there's a lot of guys out there that are not as well known that, yeah, Nikki, uh, a lot of those late seventies, eighties, and even into the nineties, uh, F1 drivers. I just watched a video earlier today of Juan Pablo going around, uh, Imola in a 2001 F1 car. This is right before, uh, traction control was introduced. So you're talking about a 750 horsepower f1 car with no traction control and he's going around imola like absolutely insane total madman and it's fucking impressive to watch man uh but yeah there's a lot of drivers out there that i would put well above and beyond uh gordon any day of the week my number one of all time will always be senna uh because i remember watching him drive i grew up that was when f1 was still fun to watch uh and that guy god if he wouldn't if he wouldn't have died i he would have been he probably would have rivaled schumacher um you know schumacher well actually i don't know that's kind of a debate in and of itself you know schumacher did race with him uh he was coming up through the ranks at the time and you know schumacher will probably now go down as the greatest driver of all time um but i would have liked to have seen what senna would have been able to do and some of the later model cars, I think it would have been truly fucking impressive. Uh, all Wait right. a second. Are you, are you meaning to tell me that... Okay, I'm just curious now. Mm -hmm. Did you watch F1 this season? Because I actually had... No. I thought it was a great season. No. I, I've lost all interest in F1. It's just, I don't like the cars. I don't like... It's not. It's not the same racing that it used to be. They can't... You know, they're trying to alleviate it now, all the downforce issues and not being able to have close racing because of the dirty air and so on and so forth. Uh, but it is not like it was, you know, in the early from like 2003 back. That's kind of to me the when F1 died is that like post 2003. Um, the. All right. So to continue on, I guess, with the. Uh, Dream car. Uh, what do you got, Patty? Oh, it's uh, it's no contest. 2018 uh, fucking Corvette. The new fucking Stingrays, man. Those things are sexy as fuck. Really? I, uh, I loved them. The, uh, I lo when I was a kid, I always wanted a Corvette. I always wanted a Corvette. And honestly, I fell out of love with them when I was in college because I was like, you know what? I don't know why I even... I think the only thing I liked about them was the fucking lights popped out of the fucking front end. I thought oh, that God, was that was the thing I hated. But I've always hated pop-up new... fucking headlights. Oh, I fucking loved them. I thought they were the coolest fucking thing. The, the only that, spaceship now, thing to me in the world. The difference with Corvette versus a lot of the other pop-out headlights was that Corvette, they didn't just pop out. They spun around. They, they didn't just pop straight up and down. That was yeah. the only redeeming factor about how they did their pop-up headlights. The, the only hiding headlights I've ever enjoyed are on the Chargers. Because when yep. the headlights are off, it is one of the meanest looking fucking front ends of any car. That grill when, just goes yeah. on forever. Yeah, it's just menacing looking when those headlight covers are down. But other than that, For I sure. hate hidden headlights. <laughs> the new off model topic. came out. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Locke. Oh, uh, no. I was going to say, are, are they making DeLoreans again? I heard something yes. about that. Wait, what? Yeah. I heard I that they were going to start producing this. them again or something. There's a rumor rolling around that uh, some, I don't know if it's going to be DMC or not, but somebody is re-releasing the DeLorean as a modern updated car. Oh, God. And, like, with the, <laughs> with the Pelican doors and everything. Like, I, fuck, I will be all over that shit. Yeah, no. I'm good. No? I mean, I was hyped when they said they were going to remake the original Bronco, the A786 fucking mm -hmm. four-speed manual Bronco that was all yeah. for rock crawling, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. I mean, I've seen, you know, that one prototype has been floating around forever. They actually had it in that Rampage movie with The Rock. If you guys have seen that movie Rampage, that truck that he's driving in the very start of that, that all 
uh, silver truck. That's what that is. That's the prototype for the Bronco when they were going to bring it back. Um, I was not impressed at all with that prototype. I was like, hey, that that's not a Bronco. Yeah, I've actually never seen the actual prototype, but I've like the CG like mock up of like the I guess uh, the concept of it. I was like, okay, like, I can get down with that, but. I haven't seen that. I tell you the one that they just reintroduced that impressed the hell out of me. And I would be very tempted to get is the new Jeep pickup there. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember if they brought it back under the Comanche badge or not, but that was always one of my favorite pickups of all time was the Jeep pickup, uh, the Comanche. Um, and they're bringing that back now and it is drop dead gorgeous. Um, I, uh, my high school welding teacher still owns an original Comanche. He he redid it when I was in school, repainted it a fucking beautiful cherry fire engine red. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was such a gorgeous truck. Yeah, that was the, I mean, that's kind of the, I guess the go-to color for Comanches is either that cherry uh, red or the fucking yellow, um, kind of that off yellow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so Patty's is a brand new Corvette. I did not, uh, I did not expect that. That's, I mean, it is a very sexy car, but I did not expect that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious now. What did you expect? I just wasn't expecting a brand new car. Maybe something a little bit older. Um, but I mean, I can get behind it. Like I said, I, I fucking love the new Corvettes. Uh, so, a Ron. Um, I'm betting we're going to be pretty close to each other on this because if you guys haven't realized this by now, me and AA Ron are basically fucking separated at birth. Um, Sydney says that we actually share a brain. Uh, so we have <laughs> half of one between the two of us. Uh, so what's your money? No object car. So you're probably going to be in a different family than I am, but I'm sure you would approve. Uh, 1971 Hemi Cuda in green. Ooh. I'm actually not that far off. My one car is off a little bit, but my other two are not. Um, actually, one of the other two is a Cuda with the shaker hood. Um, a big reason for that being Don fucking Johnson. And yep. you guys remember Nash Bridges back in the day, that yellow yep. fucking convertible Cuda with the white interior that he always bragged there was only 15 of these made. Granted, I didn't like the yellow. I like the grabber green. That's always been my favorite, you know, Plymouth or, you know, Dodge color, whatever has been the grabber green. Um, but yeah, Cuda's one of my top cars of all time. Yeah, it, it's to the point that, well, I was getting some ink done on my arm and one of those happened to drive by and my tattoo artist said, I have that color. I said, we're putting it in. It's on. <laughs> I ha I have grabber green. There there is a ink company that makes that exact. They make all of the Plymouth colors. The grabber green. The uh uh I forget what the purple's called now. Um, I know the plum, original. Plum crazy. Yeah, plum crazy. That's it. You know the original color for that, or the original name for that color is statutory grape. <laughs> <laughs> all right, funny yeah. story about that. A, a fr good friend of mine had a 1967 Mustang fastback. Uh, had, it, with that purple, same purple paint scheme on it, and we always called this statutory green. That's the original name that Dodge was going to give that color was statutory grape. And, you know, cooler heads prevailed or smarter heads prevailed, and they ended up going with uh, plum crazy. But, yeah, that's a little <laughs> inside fucking car info you can whip out on your buddy next time you're at the bar. Uh, yeah, that's the awesome. original well, color is statutory grape. Unfortunately, it got stolen when we lived in Hollywood. But... Oh, of course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, I guess we're on to mine, huh? Yeah, well, what's the one? God damn it, I hate having to pick one. I'll say my other two were actually both in the Dodge family. It's a Plymouth Cuda and a Dodge Charger. Um, and, of course, you know, the Charger has to be all black. Uh, of course. Cuda has to be grabber green with the shaker hood. Um, so, and also the... Hemi billboard graphic down the side and flat black. It's a must. Oh yeah. I, I, I linked that exact picture. That, <laughs> that is the exact one that I want right there. So my money, no object and all be all dream car is a 71 Chevelle SS 454. Jesus. Yep. What is that? 
black with the white stripes. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Is that Basically think on? of uh, the new John Wick movie, that car that he picks up after his Mustang gets stolen. That's my dream car. And I've been lucky enough to be able to drive that, not that exact car, but that exact model of car. Uh, when I was 17, or no, I was 18. I had just gotten out of school. I was working at a gas station as a fucking clerk. And this guy that used to come in all the fucking time, Bernie, got to know the guy very well, hung out with him and shit. He had an amazing car collection. But his prized possession was his 71 Chevelle that he bought brand new off the showroom floor. And he used to go to the bar and get sauced up all the time. And... He would come by the fucking gas station and I'd always bitch at him for driving drunk. Well, one night he was driving the Chevelle and came into the gas station and he was hammered. And I told him, you know, Bernie, I'm off in five minutes. I cannot let you leave here with my dream car hammered because if something happens to that car, I will fucking cry. If you kill yourself, it's that's a you problem. But if you destroy my car by being drunk we're going to have problems. And to my fucking amazement, he reaches into his pocket, hands me his keys and says, I'll be over there waiting. You can drive me home. Nice. So I got off work and we go out and hop in his car and I turn that key at 18 years old. I'm driving my absolute dream car. And I get to, I drove Bernie home drove his car back to the fucking gas station, parked it, locked it up and went home in my piece of shit. 1991 S10. And was like, <laughs> my God, I, my life is complete. Like I, I got to drive the ultimate car. And then he changed his underwear. <laughs> yeah. No, he was, he was absolutely amazing about it. The next day he came in and seen me at work and, you know, asked me how it was and everything. And of course I fucking basically slobbered all over his fucking dick for letting me drive his car. But he told me before I left, he was like, look, do what you want. Have a little bit of fun with it. Something happens. You belong to me, but don't let this opportunity go to waste, which is basically him saying, go fucking let her eat and see what happens. And it lived up to the hype. 100 fucking percent. Nice. Like, I can't, I can't even quantify in words how amazing it was to drive that fucking car. Muncie fucking rock crusher transmission. I mean, that thing, I remember years and years ago when uh, all the car shows were big on like Spike TV and all of that. Um, they had done a shootout with all the old school muscle cars. You know, they had the Chevelles, they had uh, Corvettes, they had Mach 1 must are not a Mach 1. They had a Boss 429 so on and so forth all the big you know muscle cars and they were doing a shootout and at one point in the shootout they did a dyno test to test the actual horsepower because it was pretty well known that back then the big three were lying like a motherfucker on their horsepower to you know try and scale things back and you know they would say that it was rated at 425 horse when in, in actuality is putting out 450 to 475, you know, and so on and so forth. Well, that's for the insurance break. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so everybody knew they were lying their ass off, but it was fine. You know, uh, so when they did that dyno test, they get the fucking Chevelle up there and the Chevelle was rated at four and a quarter horse. And I believe it was also four and a quarter foot pounds of torque. And, they get it up there and run the dyno and it's running more like 500 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque. And all the guys testing were just like, holy shit. Yeah. GM really, uh, <laughs> they use some different markers on this shit or some different tests because this thing is nowhere near what it was rated from the factory yet. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my end all be all. Uh, like I said, charger is right up there towards the top thanks to bullet um as is the cuda thanks to nash bridges also a challenger honestly i love the challengers the original challengers uh thanks to kowalski um to me that is one of the most beautiful cars ever made is an all-white challenger just straight like the one from vanishing point or more recently if you 
ever watched the movie Death Proof, uh, the Tarantino movie that he did kind of the double feature with uh, Rodriguez, that white challenger that the chicks are freaking out about and, you know, really want to drive and stuff like that. And they're talking about the movie Vanishing Point and Kowalski that, yeah, for car guys, that is one of the, I guess, kind of, you know, holy grails of cars is an original white Vanishing Point challenger with the 340. How about a, an old 442? That's you want to hear something crazy about fucking 442s, okay? So the most famous of, of 442s are the Hearst Olds, right? You know, the white oh, yeah. and gold Hearst Olds 442s. Hearst actually owned a showroom here in Michigan, more specifically in Grand Blank. It's now a funeral home. My brother used to work at that funeral home. And I went inside there and there's Hearst memorabilia down in the basement that's left over from when he sold the place. And what's crazy about this place is the entry to it in the back is massive. There's this huge ramp leading up into there and these gigantic double doors. And that's because that's how they got the cars into the fucking building. The ramp is still there. Like how many Hearst Olds 442s were rolled up and down that fucking ramp? And now, it's, yeah. now it's dead people getting rolled up and down it. <laughs> uh, all right. So that's all of our dream cars. Uh, so we got a Subaru STI from McCoy, Honda NSX from Locke, 2018 Corvette from Patty, uh, 71 Cuda from AA Ron, and a 71 Char- uh, sorry, fucking Chevelle from me. So my next question is. Would you guys modify those cars at all or leave them completely stock? I, I, I actually have the perfect answer for this. I, I would own two. Because, <laughs> well, and so here's, here's my thing. I, I want one that's all original just to not be sacrilegious. Mm-hmm. And I, I want that original feel. But that's the car that I would sit and look at. That, that would not be my driver. I actually found this was last year. It was down in Charlotte, North Carolina. A guy had done a resto mod version of it. And the only thing that he had changed was he put a Chrysler crate engine in it. It was fuel injected. You know, it was it was completely modernized in the drivetrain area. Yeah, I so, like when guys do that. Yeah, the, the exterior of it was still, you know, just like you would see it from the factory in, you know, 70 or 71. And it looked proper. Mm-hmm. That would be... My dream car daily driver. Yeah, that that would make sense. I like those resto mods where you know everything, you know, aesthetically is from the factory, but all of the running gear, all of the suspension, you know, the brakes, everything is updated and modern and safe. Uh, because that's a big thing. If, if none of you have ever driven a classic car before, you know, driving a 1970 car that you know weighs. A few thousand pounds has like 500 horsepower and breaks the size of a small fucking dinner plate. It can be a little scary. Oh man, my my '86 Bronco thing. It's a fucking piece, huge one piece of steel, right? Mm-hmm. And it's got like little tiny fucking air brakes on it. And sometimes getting off the freeway, like I had to engine brake that thing all the yeah. time. Like it was dangerous. So what about for you, McCoy? Because, I mean, Subarus are modded like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Well, the cool thing is the, like, the STI is it's a pre-modded Impreza. Yeah, true. Right? Like, that's, so, I mean, it's meant, it's really meant for that. Uh, I would have done more to it. Um, I just couldn't really afford it at the time. Um, I put, like, three-inch pipes, uh, cat back all the way up and down, like a full gritty exhaust system on it, which sounded fucking sweet. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Like for what it was, like stock, pretty much it was. I I really just enjoyed driving it how it was. Uh, no, it's pretty much fair, felt dude. like buying a buying a pre modded car. I mean, three hundred horse, three hundred foot pound torque, three thousand pounds. Out of a two liter. Up. Yeah, about a two point a two point five liter Porsche boxer engine with an Audi all wheel drive system. That's what's a Franken car. That's what's always amazed me. Like, you know, like I said, I've always been more of an evo fan and that was it the evo fucking eight or ten or whatever that's like a 1.8 liter with 450 fucking horse and it's just like those are like fucking f1 numbers this is ridiculous um what about you Locke? i know obviously you're not a huge 
you're not a huge car guy, but still, like you, you would know if you want to like add shit to it or modify well, things. You know, I'd have to, I'd have to rice it out, put a bunch of under yeah, put some, lights on it. yeah, put some underglow on it. Forty seven spoiler on the back. Pearlescent PS4, blue. Yeah, I honestly, television. Yeah. I honestly, there are some cars that get riced out like that that I do appreciate. The main one being, you know, the Veilside RX seven. From what was it, Tokyo Drift? That orange right. one that Han drives, like that to me is an absolutely gorgeous car. Grant, it's a multi-million-dollar fucking vehicle, but that to me, like I can get down on that level of you know ricing things out. Yeah. Well, I'm just kidding. I actually don't know anything about uh, you know turbos or anything like that. But uh, all I know from modifying cars is from from video games. <laughs> man, they're getting <laughs> more honest. and more fucking accurate, man. It's true. Um. What about you, Patty? Would you uh, would you do anything to that nice, fresh, brand new fucking Corvette? God, that vet would be turned into a fucking airplane. <laughs> I, I'd have multiple switches doing cool shit. Like I wouldn't have a key starter. Fuck that shit. Uh, I don't two think two toggle keys switches to and a with. button. Yeah, yeah they, fucking they two already push button. And a button. I uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of cool shit that you can do with vets. You know, with forced induction. You know, whether it be turbos or uh, pro chargers or so on and so forth. Uh, but aesthetically, I don't really think there's a whole lot to do with them. Like there's some body kits out there, but not really that much. Granted, it's a new car. So, I mean, that's kind of to be expected. I know this may sound super douchey, but I think I want a little bit of a taller spoiler on that thing than stock. Yeah. That's about it. That's about it. Aesthetically. <laughs> I actually, I did the opposite with my STI because it comes with yeah, uh, what I like it. to call the shopping cart handle on the back. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was an 04, right? So it was the big ass square one. Yeah. I took, I stripped all the STI logos off of it and I put the regular WRX spoiler on it. So people would try and like race me on the freeway and like, I'd be in full sleeper mode and be like, no, this is actually an STI later. Woo. <laughs> That was always the the fun part about having the exhaust cutouts for my truck because you couldn't, you know, it still sounded somewhat mean, you know, because it had three inch exhaust on it and fucking glass packs, but you know, you couldn't see the exhaust dumps because they were, I mean, you could see them if it was daytime, but nighttime you couldn't really see them all that well right behind the front tires, you know. So you're digging around driving down the road and somebody pulls up alongside you trying to, you know, fucking think their shit's fast and then i reach down and pull the fucking lever for the exhaust cutouts and that thing opens up full headers and then they realize oh holy shit that's a stroke 383 yeah i just bit off more than i can chew um that was i guess that's probably something that i haven't really talked about too much on here on the podcast or really on anything is you know the racing and stuff that i used to do uh what about you guys did you guys ever dabble around in uh in some street racing uh only like nothing organized if there was any racing it would be some dude would pull up next to me on the freeway down in la and was like we'd look at each other and then we'd both just punch it <laughs> to see, right see who could dodge the traffic better um but i like when i lived in lake tahoe up in the mountains like i would take that car out in the dirt and just tear it up oh yeah oh man I, yeah never did any track stuff though um, real quickly, gig, uh, or forward. Thank you a ton brother for that $60 donation. That is huge. Uh, I'm sure Sid will thank you as she's smashing a pizza. Um, yeah, I, I did a lot of street racing. If any of you guys aren't from, you know, kind of the Michigan area, you wouldn't really know, but Michigan's got a pretty well-known street racing scene. Um, specifically in Flint. Uh, it's called the cruise. Everybody, you know, if you're not from around here, you think we're talking about a fucking boat or something. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to fucking do? You don't got water to drink, so you yeah. may as well race. <laughs> well, the cruise has been a staple in Flint for longer than I've been alive. Uh, I mean, my dad went to the cruise back in the sixties, you know, so it, it's always been around street racing. has always been a thing here. Um, that's why when the first fast and furious movie came out, all of us were fucking super geek to go see it. Cause we're like, Holy shit. They made a movie about what we do. I mean, that's, that was when we were all very, very deep into it. All of us were street racing me, all of my brothers, all of our friends, we were all street racing. 
And then we watch the movie and we're like, motherfucker, it took you guys 45 seconds to do a quote unquote 10 second pass in a car that I know goddamn well ain't doing a 10 second quarter mile. Like the 10 second quarter for a drag racer is kind of like the, you know, that's the stamp of approval. Like if you've got a 10 second car, you've got a fast fucking car. And there wasn't a goddamn one of those cars in that, you know, first drag race that are running a 10 second quarter. I don't care how many fucking mother bottles you throw at that thing, how many cheater systems or fogger plates you put on that fucking, you know, uh, what the hell was that? Eclipse, that green car that Brian drives. That thing is not running a 10 second quarter mile. It's not. It's a front wheel drive piece of shit. It's yeah, not no. <laughs> doing it. You know, there's guys you know, here that are running cars that weigh 1,800 pounds with 700 horsepower chasing 10 second quarters. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's, that was our life for quite a few years was just like that. You know, we would shut down streets. We use, that was when Nextel was huge. You know, when you had the two way from Nextel, you hear that oh, beep, yeah, the little beeper. and there'd be fucking, you'd be down at, you know, the cruise, there'd be three, 400 people down there and tons of us with race cars and shit. And you'd hear that beep beep and you'd see 40 people reaching for their phone. Cause nobody knew exactly whose it was going off, but that's how we all communicated. And that's, you know, that's what we did. We shut down roads and we would race. We would turn people around. There was, you know, if it was the real big boys racing, the fucking eight, seven, eight second fucking cars, we'd take them up on the highway, like the inner city highway. And we'd shut down the fucking freeway in the middle of the city. We'd shut it down and we'd bust off fucking three, four wide racing and then disappear before the cops show up. Um, so what about the rest of you guys? Did you guys dick around doing any street racing? <laughs> I had a fucking, all right. My first car was a 2000 and two, oh, it was a 2001 Ford Focus. I didn't race it per se, but there were a lot of shit birds on the road that pissed me off every now and again. And they were driving shittier cars than I was. And so, you know, little rich city kid pull up in his, you know, beat ass Ford Focus, pull up next door. He's like, eh, eh. he looks right. over. Yeah. He looks at me. He's like, you shitting me? I'm like, yeah, let's go. And we're talking like, like every, every high school kid. Now, unless you were fucking rich as balls and which in this town, there were a few, but uh, most parents were sensible enough to not buy their kids brand new cars when they first got their license like mine. Uh, so I had a Ford Focus, and I remember the one guy I ever raced and won was this little, uh, oh shit, what that little Toyota Celica. Oh, yeah. In my car. Yeah. And I guess he didn't take very good care of it. Now, like, my car, I, I, it was old as shit, but it did me, it did good by me because I always took it for oil changes. I, you know, it always was fuel all the time, and I, I did, I did stuff what I could do it on my own without having to take it to a shop. But, the one race I won, dude, fucking took off in this Ford Focus. He took off next to me, and I watched his car stutter to a putt, like literally on the road behind me. I was like, well. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's, I mean, I fucking, like I said, obviously, I, I street race for a long time. Um, I think, A, Ron, I sh showed you the pictures, right, when we took the truck to the track, when I pulled oh, yeah. the fucking wheels up off of it. Yeah, that... That was one of the funnest nights, also one of the scariest nights. That's the first time I pulled the wheels off the ground, and they came way off the fucking ground to the point I was ripping the fucking paint off the back bumper because I didn't have any wheelie Ooh. bars on there. That was the first night we had hit that uh, hit that engine with spray, and we were not expecting you know a one fifty shot to do that. Uh, but it was just it was good weather. It was nice and cool. The track was hooking like a motherfucker. And I launched that thing and I gave it the full fucking juice right off the start and it ripped the front end up off the ground uh, and scared the fuck out of me. I got lucky as shit. I didn't break anything coming back down because that truck was not set up to do wheelies like that. Um, but I've. I guess to kind of answer a question before anybody even ask it as to why that's not really part of my life anymore is kind of twofold. Um, Back in, would have been 2007, um, or sorry, 2006. God, no, I feel like an asshole. Um, in 2006, and not to really bring the 
mood down, but just to kind of explain this to you guys. In 2006, a uh, f- very good friend of ours was actually murdered uh, down at the cruise, the place where we all street raced. And it was over a race uh, and some rocks being thrown at cars and so on and so forth. Just a bunch of mindless bullshit that never should have happened. Uh, but Adam was murdered in 2006. And that really put kind of a damper on the crews for everybody. Cause now we had to, you know, we had to kind of consolidate our group of, you know, who we really allowed around us, who we let near the cars, what was going on, you know, everything just kind of went on lockdown for a long, long time. Um, and it, the attitude of everybody started kind of changing and it was very much so, uh, no longer a family event as to where that's what it used to be. You know, it used to be, you bring the whole family down to the cruise. I mean, there was guys that had sleepers, you know, full on station wagons that they'd bring the whole fucking family down kids and all. And then they'd go race their car. You know, they fucking kick the kids out of the back and go race the car. Uh, and then it, it, the, I don't really want to blame it on the younger generation per se, but that's kind of what it was. The, the younger kids kind of started moving in and they were, uh, kind of causing more problems than what we really wanted to deal with. Um, And then the expense really started hitting a lot of us. You know, there was a a point there where Torco was almost $7 a gallon. And when you're talking about, you know, running race cars that, you know, even for me, you're lucky to get eight miles to the gallon if you're really babying the fuck out of it. If you're racing it and so on, you're getting more like four. Um, and when you're dropping a hundred bucks a night in fuel, it becomes really hard to justify doing that. Uh, so that's pretty much why I got out of it. Just kind of the, the scene changed a lot and it just got too goddamn expensive. That's why when I say, you know, that I've got all this money into my gaming equipment, my PC and everything like that, like this is cheap compared to what I used to do, which was racing cars and motorcycles and shit like that. This is a lot cheaper. And you can't really control who comes to those things, right? Because it's like a not public really. Street. I mean, where we hung out, you know, because we're not racing. We weren't racing like all the time because you can't. The cops will fucking bust you. So right. we have to hang out in parking lots. And we had a friend who owned multiple restaurants and stuff. My brother ended up getting in with him and had like part ownership in one of his restaurants. And we would hang out in the parking lot of the restaurant and they would actually bring in employees and open the restaurant up after hours for us uh, because he made a fuck ton of money off of us. You know, there's a hundred people hanging out in this parking lot all night. Right. He opens up the restaurant. Boom. He's making a couple grand Saturday and uh, our Friday, Saturday and Sunday. He's making thousands of dollars off of us by having the restaurant open from like 10 o'clock till 4 a.m. You know, um, so that we could control a little bit more every so often some ass hats would try and pull in there and do some stupid stuff like revving their engines and shit. And that didn't really fly with us one night, a bunch of guys on bikes come in there and normally we're cool with guys on bikes. Cause we're all, you know, or at least a lot of us were bikers ourselves. Uh, but they were just kind of, they were throwing the wrong attitude in there. They would come in, we're rev bombing the fucking parking lot and shit. And I'll always remember, my brother fucking walking across the parking lot and my run brother, Steve, he's fucking Magilla the gorilla, man. Like he's just, he looks like a monster. And I remember him like fucking lumbering his way across the parking lot, screaming across the parking lot to everyone saying, I got a hundred bucks that I can knock this motherfucker out with his helmet still on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it, man. And those guys tore out of there so quick. Cause they had about 10 dudes that come at him like they were about to fucking eat him for breakfast. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we uh, I actually remember one night we brought my mom down to the races and because she she would always bug us. You know, I want I want to go see what you guys do, you know, so on and so forth, being a typical mom. And uh, so we're like, all right. And my mom's always been kind of cool and edgy, you know, and so on and so forth. Like my mom was a total hippie and shit. Uh, so we brought my mom down to the races one night and. Uh, we were shutting down this one street that we always raced on and we shut down the one side of the intersection. So nobody could go through while we touched the races off. Well, every time the race would touch off, everybody would move back over onto the sidewalk and, you know, let cars start going through again. And then when we're next set or ready to pull up there, 
the crowd would walk out, shut down the street. They'd pull out their race cars, stage, line up, and then go. Well, we're getting ready to step out and close the intersection. And my mom is like the first fucking person off the sidewalk, like stepping out in the street while there's still cars coming through. And I had to like stop her and like, mom, like you can't just step out there by yourself. Like you got to wait for the whole fucking crowd to go out there and, you know, shut down the intersection. You're about to get run the fuck over. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool though. Like taking, you know, like at the time, my 50 something year old mother out to the fucking street races. Like it, it was pretty cool. That so is like awesome. My mom yeah. wanted to know what I did back in the day, so she came out to some of the shows when I was in a band and uh, lead singer of a band and stuff, and she liked that. Now, you know, she comes over to visit, and I show her my streaming stuff, and she's like, "This is retarded." <laughs> 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 she's like, she doesn't understand it. Uh, I f- like. I feel like your mom would be someone that would just like make me laugh uncontrollably. Oh, probably. She's no bullshit for sure. <laughs> She's Canadian too, eh? Yeah. Well, full Japanese. Yeah. Canadian. Yeah. Woo! Um. So wait, what is this? Is fucking retarded in Japanese? Uh. I don't know. Kore wa baka or something like that. Nanda kore. Yeah, so it's like, what the fuck is this or something like that? <laughs> Jesus. I t- now something I like that. Now I just want to hear your mom bitching you out in Japanese. It's... Oh yeah, it happens. Happens quite often. <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. Uh, so, I get, do any of you guys ride bikes besides me and AA Ron? Are we the only two that ride? Yeah, I think so. I I wish I did, but uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't. Killed I, here probably if I did that. I don't anymore. I know AA Ron still has his. Yeah, My, uh, I still ride occasionally, just not as much as I used to, because I don't have the fucking time. My fraternity brother was kind enough to teach me to ride in the parking lot of the fraternity house. And from then, I've never sat on another bike in my life just because I a, don't have anybody willing enough to, like, teach me. But B, like, I don't know. Uh, I know too many people who have died on bikes just from other people's negligence. You know, yeah. Same. Yeah. it's uh, That's always the most terrifying part it, when riding. It, it's not. It's not a matter of, do I know what I'm doing? It's, hey, is that fucking 19-year-old girl paying attention to the fact that I'm, you know, pulling up into her blind spot right now? Yeah, 19 or 90. Fucking either way. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so let's move on on from kind of the car stuff. Uh, The next thing I want to talk about is still is back to kind of gaming related uh specifically with the unit stuff as you guys know the units on winter stand down right now we're wrapped up for the year uh i guess real quickly to explain to you guys if you don't you guys listening if you don't know what uh winter stand down is basically we go non-stop for 11 months out of the year uh and then in december every year we give the guys roughly a month off where there's no requirements. They don't have to do any trainings. There are no required operations, no nothing. They don't even have to do fucking paperwork. It's just take a break, take a break, get the fuck out of here, you know, be gone. So it greatly helps with burnout and stuff like that. I was telling Locke earlier, I personally hate it. I can appreciate it. I know why we do it. I hate it. I hate the idea of guys not training and not continuing to improve and you know losing some of that repetition and so on but i can appreciate it um so we're still on our winter stand down we'll be coming back the sixth uh from that that's when winter stand down will end for us uh but what i want to ask you guys or i guess what i kind of want to talk about a little bit here is obviously we've all done stuff throughout the year with the unit uh, what's kind of the standout for you guys this year for 2018? What's the, what's the standout? Is there a specific deployment or specific, uh, operation or training or whatever? Is there one thing that stands out to any of you guys for this year? I didn't get to shoot down any helicopters this year. <laughs> I did. Yeah, Covering and, doesn't uh, count. And, and he doesn't. He didn't cheat and use a fucking lock on. Ha ha. 
I've Any monkey can shoot like a hovering a helicopter so. with a fucking Moz. No offense. It was moving still. It kind of moved into the path of the missile, but or the the rocket, but you know, it still counts. I still ain't seen you do it. Do it. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> you talk all the shit you want, but I ain't seen you do it. <laughs> um, well, let's just let's go down the line again. All right. So McCoy, what's what's the 2018 506 thing that stands out for you? Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is our foray into exploring you know coin in a deployment with like you know multiple Zeus operators. Christ. And I I had heard, you know, I'd heard grumblings from other, you know, Milsom units that attempted the same thing and which ended in complete failure. But I feel like we pulled that off pretty well overall. Um at least in my opinion, I still had a lot of fun doing it. And uh I don't know that yeah, that last deployment was pretty pretty well well thought out and a lot of fun. Uh, like the transition from the coin stuff into a, a more stand-up fight was done really well, and yeah, I don't know that's that's what really stands out to me, I guess. Yeah, well, I think the reason that we were more successful at it is simply because the fact that we did have three Zeus operators. Right. Nobody, yeah. Nobody else has done that before. Um, but I'm glad that you noticed that though the transition from kind of the insurgent fighting to the more traditional, and then you know towards the end it was more radicalists dealing with more you know ieds at odd places and just kind of overall chaos yeah it was it was a good it was a good blend because i i like definitely like when we were doing a lot like pretty solely coin like pretty much only coin for quite a while like the rank mm -hmm. and file was like kind of getting a little a little burnt out with it you know they were getting frustrated which right i mean you, you would in a coin mm -hmm. environment right uh but i feel like that that was executed well I was uh I was actually surprised by your response. I I was expecting you to say becoming a platoon sergeant was kind of the was kind of the standout for you. Oh, I, well, I didn't I didn't know it was like a personal specific thing. I thought it was more Well, know, yeah, more I'm asking I'm asking you. That's that's as personal oh, okay. as it gets, motherfucker. Well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, that was a big thing for me. Like I feel like it was a, you know, not to sound like a pompous ass, but a meteoric rise <laughs> for over the last year for me. Like I started the year I started right after Winter Stand Down as a team leader in one two, and then about six or seven months later, I got a squad, which is two three, and I was only the squad leader for like I don't know two months, two and a half months, and then I now a platoon sergeant. Oh wow! I didn't realize it, it was that. Yeah, it was, quick I was for you. like, holy shit! That was skills, man. Skills. Yeah, I, I mean I was that was like quicker. Surprised. That was quicker than what I did. I mean, granted, when I moved up to platoon, it's because of the fucking purge, but still. I mean, that's why I was like, when when you messaged me to like ask me or offer me the position, I was like, oh fuck, like I'm in big trouble. Like, what did I do? <laughs> that's any time I any time I call someone into my office, they just assume they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a safe bet. <laughs> but yeah, so that that was. I mean, it's been a pretty big year for me. Became a recruit instructor and also an OSET instructor. So like, my role within the five hundred six has expanded uh, substantially within last year, and it's been it's been a whirlwind ride, but it's been fucking awesome. Wow, yeah, that's I didn't Yeah, I didn't even think about that fact. Yeah, you went so you went in twelve months or basically eleven months, you went from being even less than eleven months because you've been a platoon sergeant for a minute now. You went from being a team leader to being a platoon sergeant responsible for essentially forty guys and also being a recruit instructor and an OSUT instructor. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, I became yeah, a recruit instructor uh... in, in April, and OSUT is... I mean, I've been helping with OSUT for like a year now, but now I got the official title as assistant instructor, I guess, like two months ago now? Yeah, that's uh, that's quite the fucking year, man. Yeah. Um, Locke, what about for you? I know, you know you're in reserves, yeah. but still you fill in you know, somewhat regularly. Um, has there been anything this year that's kind of stood out for you? Well, like you said, I haven't really uh, done anything in an official capacity for a, a little while now, but I filled in for stuff, and those are always good fun. We were talking in chat there about um, a big mass chasm that happened. Uh, I think Liquid was saying half of 2-1 capturing radio station. Oh, um, yeah, when the fucking yeah. task force got hit by the yeah. uh, fucking rockets. Yeah, so that was a really fun one. It stands out for me, but... um. 
I got to say the highlight of the year, though, honestly, is not something specific, like one mission or anything. It's just uh, the whole year of hanging out with good people, playing different games, um, coming in and always just having good conversation and something to play with people. You know, that's uh, that's huge. Yeah, because you're Mr. Fucking Popular, as we were discussing earlier. <laughs> I get around. Yeah. I'm a little slutty. It's the hair, man. Because you're one of them <laughs> fucking dirty long hairs. That's, I was actually fucking, my brother was busting my balls earlier because I haven't cut my hair in a couple of weeks now, so it's starting to grow out. And he was like, you fucking dirty long hair. It's like half <laughs> well, an inch long. How long is it? It can't be that long. It's like an half inch. an inch. Nice. Yeah. It's so, but we keep it, you know, pretty tight. Um, so you, you and Sal both are letting it grow. Fucking Sal's got a fucking real fuck boy haircut now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you I see a picture of him on Facebook. I ain't got that. It's oh like, God. like I said, it's like half an inch. But that shit's getting cut here soon. I just been lazy and haven't felt like shaving my head. But normally I do it every two weeks. Um. So Patty, what about you? What stands out this year for you in terms of the five hundred six? Um. Oh, uh, I I became a um. I became a section lead for two four, which is kind of cool. Uh. I now run the um, the anti armor section for two four or for Havoc two, I guess. They're anyway. CCMTs, oh, close CCMTs. combat missile teams. Can't fucking bust off with that nonsensical bullshit in a room with a former weapon squad leader. I I I don't disagree with you. At the same time, I I need I yes, you are right. I need to find I need to find the people who have it listed as AA, and I will bust them. Anyway. Um, so that happened. I, I, other than that, like, I'll be honest, a lot of what I done in, uh, like operations, like, I don't think I've, I don't think I did anything that kind of like stood out that said, oh, this was fantastic. Um, but I'll watched be honest, me shoot down a helicopter with a Maws. I didn't watch you do that. So, <laughs> well, you watched the video of it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, I think I think I'd have to say my favorite thing for the year was the performance enhancements for 506 as a whole. Um, with the server, we didn't get no steroids. You're, the steroid, the servers on steroids. Oh uh, yeah. Um. All right. So the fucking the upgrades basically that we've we've made, uh, which has increased our performance capabilities. Yes. Yeah, that is, that is kind of a, a high point for me. Um, and a huge, huge uh, part of that. Uh, uh, shit, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, I guess a huge credit uh, goes to Strepman for that. Strep was actually the one that kind of pulled that off. He was the go between with Arma Host and uh, got talking to them and said, hey, you know, I know. You know, you know who we are. We need a new server. What can you do for us? So on and so forth. And he got that banging ass custom built server for us through Arma Host. That you know, it's it's definitely a fucking monster. Um, all right, hey, Ron, what about you? Well, I would say probably my roller coaster of a year. Granted, it's not quite as grand as uh, McCoy's, but uh, I went from actually being billeted for once, uh, you know, coming out of reserves and yeah. being billeted in a 2-1 Bravo. Uh, and then, you know, about halfway through the year, going to uh, being the platoon radio operator, which was a, a completely different role from obviously being just a, a you know, fire team member and, you know, trying to learn... I guess all the nuances for a position that basically had no documentation. Yeah. It was kind of a new thing. Yeah. Kind of something that, you know, we had to make up on the fly and kind of just figure shit out on. And Um, I've I've really enjoyed it. And to, I guess, kind of elaborate on uh, what a Ron's talking about there in terms of coming out of reserves and so on. Uh, for any of you guys that don't really know the history that is AA run, um, we've known each other for fuck, basically a few years at this point. Uh, AA Ron's always been around the streams and in the comment sections and stuff on videos and stuff like that. He's watched, uh, watched our shit for a long time. And, 
uh, after some uh, arm twisting and convincing uh, via me telling him to just fucking put in an application and just go straight to reserves so you can at least hang out with us and fill in, you know, when they uh, when you have the chance. Uh, he finally did and got into the unit and it was uh, went straight into reserves and was a PB2 for fucking ever, which is why I believe still in discord. Your shit still says formally PB2 Aaron. Yeah, it does. Um, that's why it's because he was a PV two forever because he was in reserves because he didn't have time to fucking play. Uh, but that was after quite a lot of fucking poking and prodding, like, dude, just put in a fucking application. You hang out with right. us in chat or in fucking stream every fucking night. Anyways. Like how long was that Aaron that it took to convince you to join up and just go straight into reserves? Oh, probably the better part of a year. Yeah. Um, and it was the same thing with Cope. Like Cope's a, another one that did the exact same thing, was always hanging out in the streams, and I was just like, dude, just put in a fucking application and go to reserves. Um so yeah, we we've known each other for a while now. Like I was saying, uh Sid said that uh we share a brain, so you know, we uh we tend to uh, talk pretty much on a daily basis, which is kind of funny when you think about the fact that we were introduced through a stream and now like we talk pretty much on a daily basis. You know everything that's going on with my family and shit. I mean, pretty much all you guys on this channel know what's going on with my family on like a daily basis and shit. Like we all stay close and in touch personally. Like it's not just a professional thing, especially with yeah. those of us in this room. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we talk all the time about, you know, happening in real life mm -hmm. keep up to date um all right so before i go into kind of my standout uh thing for 2018 for the unit I'm going to mention again real quick uh the winners are being announced tonight for the uh christmas giveaway uh i do have the names sitting here in front of me i just drew them unfortunately again my screen cap's not working otherwise i would kind of drag it over and show you guys the names one by one, but I'll still read them out to you. Um, so I'm going to announce those after I go over kind of my stuff here. Uh, again, what we're giving away is a Corsair Schematar uh, RGB mouse, which is the exact same mouse that I'm using. Uh, a Corsair K95 keyboard, which is the upgraded version of what I'm using. And a... HyperX Cloud 2 headset, one of the best headsets on the market, in my opinion, uh, as well as a mystery uh, prize that is huge, at least in my opinion, is huge. Um, and yes, Storm, you absolutely, basically the way this giveaway worked is everybody that my bot recognizes as a, a regular in the channel, anybody that is in the streams all the time, not even people that are talking, just people that are in the streams all the time. My bot recognizes as a regular for the channel. That's where the winners were drawn from. So everybody that hangs out all the time has the exact same chances. Doesn't matter if you're a subscriber, non-subscriber, whatever. It's just you're you have a regular tag in my bots uh system. So again, those winners are going to be announced here in just a minute after I get through my uh, standout thing for the unit for the year. So for me, the biggest standout in 2018 uh, is this last deployment, mostly because of how much new stuff that we tried on this deployment. Uh, you know, we we talked about bringing in three Zeus operators. That's big. Um, the coin stuff and just kind of the, change to the deployment style that we did this year was big the s2 briefs the amount of work that our s2 guys put into the briefs and the workups on the provinces and the uh personnel you know the hvts and stuff that we went after every single person had a workup every town had a workup uh we had s2 briefs before pretty much every single mission um they put in a ridiculous amount of work to get all of that done and everything that I just talked about is stuff that we had never done before. In the four years of this unit being around, we had never tried any of that stuff before. 
Uh, so that's really the standout for me. It, you know, some things work great. Some things we had to tweak and improve as time went on. Um, and I think going forward, those systems will probably see again, maybe altered in some way, maybe the exact same. But for me, that was kind of the, the best part of the year for me in terms of the unit is all of the new stuff that we got to try and whether it failed or, you know, worked great. Either way, if we tried it, we pulled off a lot of things that, you know, we had talked about doing for a long time and we finally implemented it and in my opinion worked well. Uh, so yeah, for me, that's, that's the big thing out of this year is just the final deployment, not necessarily specific missions. Nothing really stands out for me. It's all kind of a blur for me, honestly, as most deployments and so on are. Um, but yeah, to me, that's the standout is all the new stuff. Um, what did you, what did you guys think? I know McCoy, you already kind of touched on, you enjoyed the new style. Uh, what about you lock? Did, did you notice the changes that we had made at all uh initially with the coin stuff i did um it, it was just a different feel it was much slower you had to be more careful and look out for things um i really enjoyed that and then after a while i think it, it pushed a little bit back into more action which you know of course everyone enjoys and i thought that was really good too mm -hmm. but um uh, like i said i caught i caught a few missions but overall i heard it was it was really fun everyone enjoyed it um Hardman mentioned in chat there that he thinks we should do a full declassification on like all of the S2 stuff that those guys worked up. And I kind of, I do like that idea to make that visible for everybody in the unit to see how much work that those guys really put into all of that. Because even, you know, what S2 briefs and workups and stuff guys got, that's the tip of the fucking iceberg. It, of what those guys actually did. There is a lot of work that goes into the background of, you know, deployments and missions and oh, everything yeah. like that. And they definitely need recognition for sure. Well, that's, you know, I was, uh, one of the previous podcasts, we were talking about what really goes into a deployment and, uh, you know, still, I don't think people realize that, you know, we just got wrapped up on, on this deployment. We, you know, go into winter stand down, I've already got the FTX cycle planned. It's ready to go. And I'm on to the next deployment that like that's already being laid out. The next deployment is what we're doing, where we're going, so on and so forth. That's all already being planned. We're talking about something that's, you know, potentially five, six, eight months down the road and we're already rocking and rolling on it. And it's December, you know. Um, Patty, what about you? Did you notice any of the changes that we had made in terms of the this last deployment? Yeah, I noticed them. Like, I really enjoyed the coin op shit and, like, you know, basically having to tiptoe around the fucking IEDs. That was fun. I feel like um, something that maybe if we continue to look at coin ops in the future or maybe as we try to evolve our gameplay is that um you know stepping on a landmine might actually have some more severe consequences than shit i'm down now i gotta wait you know five minutes for somebody to get me up because my body's too fucked up you know i, I it's, it's almost one of those things where it's like if you like where we have to like figure out all right where can we improve the realism without making it not fun you know what i mean right and I feel like with coin ops that that's an opportunity for us to adjust how we we play the game. Whereas we added that we added that functionality and that um, that concept to our gameplay, we should there should be a balancing to it where something else has got to change with it. Does that make sense? And I think I think it's going to be the health system, um, right? And maybe maybe in the next year or so, as we keep exploring Arma Three and as an Arma Three keeps evolving. We'll be seeing some changes in um, how medical goes about doing things. Well, on on to add to that, actually, so I mean, the the bleed out coefficient with the new ace and stuff has changed dramatically. So, you know, when you do go down and it's like really severe like that, um, there's a good chance that you're going to bleed out before someone can even get you up, right? Well, our the bleed out timers are customized. Right, but it, like I, I, from what I recall, they they upped the minimum that you can have it at, right? Mm -hmm. A while back, yeah. yeah. It's always incentive to stay alive, but uh, you know, right, yeah. I think some know. changes there um, it definitely would in increase that uh, incentive not to just run out and do dumb shit. 
You know, not that people always do dumb shit, but it happens. Oh, they do. <laughs> I was trying I to mean, be like devil's advocate kind look, of thing. I mean, yeah, look look at Brew, <laughs> when you and I did that that last op for uh the last phase for the op. I fucking decided just to do, 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 walk over a couple of dead bodies and you're like, get away from those dead bodies. Oh shit, I'm over dead bodies. <laughs> Which it, we we had learned from earlier on in, in the in the operation that oh hey they may be armed with explosives. So I I don't know. It feels like if with that concept is an opportunity to um expand the do not fucking do dumb shit to die. Sh- yeah. Concept. And that's like like you had said. You know, we introduced the concept. Now it's a matter of getting people used to it and then improving it. You know, because that's like. I don't think it would have worked well if we would have made, you know, if we would have introduced IEDs all the time and like, Oh, by the way, if you step on an IED, it's instant death. And now you've got like this completely overwhelming thing going on, all these huge changes going on at once. Like that's something that I'll never agree with, with any type of stuff like this is, you know, you got to make one change at a time. It's got to be an incremental thing. You can't just fucking, throw a Hail Mary out there and say, deal with it. Yeah, there's actually that for sure. Yeah, no, too, no. too much change will um, shock people if they don't like that. You know, that one, the, the, all the changes, right. It's going to make people unhappy. Mm-hmm. So no, no, I definitely, good. definitely agree. However, there was this one instance where I forget who put it on. It was just a fun op that we did uh, like some middle, middle East rating and a, a poppy farm or something like that. But uh, the template got, messed up and they accidentally left insta death on and and we like we hit an ied like before we took any contact and like half the platoon just died instantly and then contact just started popping off and that was actually one of the most fun fun ops that i've ever done like it was really intense oh yeah yeah for that like you know we did that uh that op with hardman a little while back um Hartman, you'll have to mention the name of it in chat there because I don't remember. Oh, Hyperblack. That was the name of it. That was like ultra realistic. We had to eat and drink and stuff like that. Um, It was a very, very fun mission. You know, there was the chance of just dying. Uh, It was one life only, so on and so forth. Um, I like that for fun ops, for official ops. I don't know if I could get down on it simply because of the, you know, the two week wait in between operations, especially at the point now where the platoons especially are getting more and more full and it's becoming more and more difficult to get a fill in spot. Um, you know, I'd be pissed if I waited two weeks to get into an operation and I'm dead in the first 10 minutes and then it's like, oh, right. okay, there's my night gone. Right. It's kind of the same argument of why we don't use advanced medical. Yeah. Well, I mean, particularly, I mean, not that it's a priority, but if people are streaming too, you go right. down and you're out. I mean, there goes your content for yeah. the rest of the night. Right. Yep. Um, I mean, that's one of the fucking reasons that I hated when Ace changed the NVGs because with with all the like, you know, the traditional looking NVG where it's kind of fuzzy and looks like shit, like that's cool for realism. For my content, it looks like dog shit. Right. Like it's already pixelated and bad enough to watch the stream with all the compression and so on. And then you go adding fucking white noise and NVGs to it. And it's just like, okay, this is fucking unwatchable. Yeah. If people can't see anything. It's, it's not that yeah. fun to, to watch. So Yeah. A visual medium doesn't work when there's no goddamn visual. Right. As I say, when there's no fucking screen cap, <laughs> the their, their picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, what do you guys think? Should we uh, should we announce these winners for this uh, Christmas giveaway? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Do it. Uh, do it. Do it. Should we? What do you? I'll ask you guys' opinion. Should we announce the winners for the mouse, the headset, and the keyboard, and then tell them what the mystery prize is, or tell oh, them yeah, what yeah. the mystery prize yes. is, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, no. mystery prize no. number one. Yeah, okay, so one. Le- leave that to the very end. Okay, all right. Well, you guys heard it. The council has fucking spoken. Um, all right, so. Winning the mouse, the Corsair Schematar uh, Pro RGB Gaming Mouse. Jesus Christ, if that ain't a mouthful. Uh, this is a full uh, gaming uh, MMO style mouse with the 12 buttons on the side. Like I said, it's the same one that I use uh, for 
everything and especially for arma i could not play arma without this fucking mouse it's an excellent excellent mouse winning that is mr vertigo vert himself has won a mouse uh i will be contacting there you go woo um, I think one of the grandkids is going to have to show him how to program it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if, if he is in chat, please tell me Vert is in chat. I haven't seen him pop up tonight, yeah, where but is God, he? I, God, I hope he is. Right now. I don't, I'm kind of surprised he's not here. Vert's here quite often. Uh, but Would yeah. be here to win? No, no, you do not have to be here to win. Um, I'll be contacting Vert uh, on my own to get this taken care of. Um, I should mention real quickly, guys. Uh, these prizes are not going to ship out until after the first. I want to wait until all the Christmas craziness and bullshit is out of the way. I don't want to take any chances of something happening, your package getting lost, or just whatever. I would feel like shit if something happened to it. So after the first is when this stuff is going to be shipped out. So again, Vert, bro, you won the uh, Schematar mouse. Congratulations on that. Next. When, when he won, I almost went, huh. <laughs> like we do in before just fucking, just like, oh, we're not a deployment so. right just instant fucking knee jerk reaction <laughs> pretty much see that's how the fucking military gets you they fucking program that shit into you we do the same thing to you motherfuckers um all right so i'm gonna skip this next one and we'll go on to the keyboard next and then we'll bounce back to the headset uh because you motherfuckers are gonna fucking cry foul i'm betting uh, so winning the keyboard, uh, again, this is the Corsair K95, uh, RGB, I believe it's cherry switches that are in it. Uh, hold on, let me pull up the box here. Yes, it's RGB cherry switches. Um, like I said, this is the upgraded version of my keyboard. This is a $200 fucking keyboard goes to Riley 117. Congratulations, Riley. Um, I don't remember seeing Riley talk in chat. I think he might be a lurker. I know there's a few of you out there that don't really talk in chat much, but hang out fairly often. So congratulations, Riley, on winning the Corsair K95 RGB keyboard. Again, that will ship out after the first. I'll be contacting you on Twitch. So if you're watching this video or if you're in here right now, whatever, Keep an eye on your Twitch. Look for that fucking message because I have to get your details from you. So I'll be contacting you on Twitch, getting your email because I'm not sending any type of personal information through Twitch. It's got to go through email and then we'll take care of it from there. So now on to the headset. Again, this is a uh, HyperX Cloud 2 headset. In my opinion, one of the best headsets on the market. Agreed. And is that what you have, Locke? I have a HyperX One, and it's oh, the most right comfortable, amazing headset. So fucking, so comfortable, dude. Even the mic, this is what I'm using. So it's it's just absolutely amazing. Oh, there you go. Uh, so the winner of the headset, of all fucking people, is uh, Douchebag himself, sitting here in channel, Mr. A.A. Ron. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Now it's rigged. Douche all right, A.A. That, Ron. That, that's awesome. You want to redraw that? Uh, I have absolutely no problems with my headset. <laughs> of course you don't all right well give me a second to i'll have to pull it back up and we'll Randy redraw Dover that Jr. i was honestly i was expecting that because i know a ron's got a good headset and he likes it so yep. yeah yeah because if i didn't like it i wouldn't have this fucking headset <laughs> right all right so the other prize that we're giving away A lot, considering. Right here, game and chair. Fuck yeah. I have a second, like, not even a second grade. I have, like, a hand-me-down piece of shit that uh, I got from somebody who's given away. It's trashed. <laughs> but having said <laughs> that, a chair is extremely important because, you know, I sit here for so many hours, you know. I have a, what you would consider probably a medium to high range office chair. So it's not a gaming chair, but it's also not the, the bargain basement. Like th this is a, a high back leather. It's, it's a pretty nice chair, but I have been thinking about a gaming chair in the near future. Hey, uh, Tom, um, 
Uh, we've lost you on comms, uh, according to chat. They're saying that yeah. uh, the sounds are cutting out. I don't know why the hell they'd be cutting out. I'm not showing any drops or anything like that. Uh, why the fuck's they got to do this shit when we're trying to fucking give stuff away? The fuck? Right. Stream's going hey. to shit. Screen cap's not working. Fucking audio's now going bad. Like, what the fuck? All right, Harbin says you're good. Yeah. You're good now. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh. 10 out of 10. All right. Oh, fuck me, I guess. I don't, I don't fucking know. Why, why wouldn't Hardman say five by five? Come on. Yeah, goddamn it, Hardman. Because <laughs> right. he's upside down, so he has to double everything. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, so. Oh. Putting, some, putting some thought into... Yeah, maybe I should keep the headset true. Mother if this fucking audio <laughs> equipment is going bad, I'd be fucking pissed because believe me, the fucking audio equipment I have sitting here is a whole lot more than a fucking hundred dollar headset. No, Brewer's not using that headset. He's using a, a like an area mic. Yeah, that's I don't speak. use an actual headset mic anymore. I have a fucking uh actual like studio microphone and stuff. Um so seating is important, right? Being comfortable while you're playing a game or browsing fucking internet, whatever is important. Um, it's something that people tend to overlook quite a bit. They tend to, you know, look more at their peripherals, monitors, keyboards, mouse, so on and so forth. Um, and I figured, you know what, maybe that should change a little bit for somebody. So the big, uh, the big prize this year for the Christmas giveaway is an Omega or a GT Omega chair which is a $300 gaming chair it's the exact same one that my ass is sitting in right now and it's incredibly comfortable fully fucking adjustable it leans back like a recliner has you know a head pillow has a lumbar pillow movable armrest so on and so forth absolutely fucking stellar chair uh so winning the chair please let it be me please let it be me please. <laughs> <laughs> right. Drum roll, and this is actually going to have to wait longer than the first because I have to actually wait for the motherfucker to get home now. It's none other than Gig. Mr. Forward. Yeah, buddy. Woohoo! Gig! As nice. uh, any of you Congrats, guys that Gig. don't know, uh, Gig is actually deployed right now. Gig is in the uh, Air Force. Gig is Forward. Uh, forward is deployed right now overseas. He is uh, active duty Air Force. And when he gets home, he will be having a nice, comfy GTO Mega chair sent to him via all of you guys. That's one thing I want to point out real quickly here uh, before we give this headset away a second time. Um, is this giveaway is not just for me. I threw $100 of my own money into it, and then the rest came from the community. Those of you guys that watch and hang out in the stream, that's where all of this stuff is coming from is from you guys you guys put in a lot more than i did this is something that we've done uh this is the second year now of doing the christmas giveaway and it's something that we'll continue to do it's kind of our opportunity as a community to give back to members of the community and just kind of show our appreciation for everyone that hangs out here and you know get to have a good time together so that being said Moving on to the headset to give that away. Uh, all right, let's pull up a name here. And the winner for the headset is not yo, not yo, mister. I have never <laughs> seen that person before. <laughs> I know that I know that's a fucking lurker. Um, yeah. Apologies if I mispronounced her misenunciated your name in any way shape or form i've just i'm sorry but i've never seen you pop up in chat but obviously you're in the streams fairly regularly for you to pop up as a regular in the chat um so again if you're here now or if you're listening to this vod later keep an eye on your fucking twitch because that's where i'm gonna be making my fucking first contact with you it's gonna be through your messages on twitch keep your eye on that and that goes for all of you guys that won, um, if for some reason one of these guys does not get back to me, uh, being, uh, well, Riley and not yo are really the only two concerns I would have. Cause I know gig and vert, uh, personally. So well, not really personally, but well, somewhat 
Anyways, if for some reason they do not get back to me, then we will be giving the stuff away again. So again, uh, Riley and not yo, if you guys are listening to this, keep an eye on your Twitch. Look out for that message because if you do not respond to that message, I'm going to be giving your shit away. So you've got until the first to respond to my message. If you haven't responded by the first, when I'm ready to ship this stuff out, it's going to be given away to somebody else. So just keep that in mind. Um, so that wraps up the Christmas giveaway for this year. Um, hopefully everybody enjoys their prizes. I'm glad I was able to give some stuff away to you guys. I'm very happy to see uh gig win this. Um, you know, he's a big contributor to the channel and he's here all the time, despite the fact that he's fucking deployed overseas right now. So I'm, I'm glad to know that when he gets home, he's going to have something really fucking cool coming to him. That's, that's nice to, for us as a community to be able to do for, uh, for somebody that's, uh, definitely underappreciated. Yeah. That'll be a nice welcome home present. For yeah, him. exactly. For sure. It's like, Hey, here's a new gaming chair. Go plant some fucking trees in seven days. Now you yeah. can be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, we'll oh, get back into that after. Right. Oh, he's he's fucking chomping at the bit for it. I cannot wait to tell him that he's won this chair. Um, I know he'll be excited as a motherfucker because I don't think he's in chat anymore. He's probably off working. Um, and yeah, Storm, absolutely. Go ahead and ask your question uh, and we'll answer it before we actually wrap up here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for Ford. That's cool. Um, all right. so. Before we actually end the uh, the podcast here, um, real quickly, this is not something that I'm going to spend a lot of time on or anything like that. I just wanted to mention it real quick just to point out the fucking ridiculousness that is the goddamn internet. Uh, I was mentioning this to Locke a little while ago, before, well before we went live. Uh, I seen this byline or this uh, headline for a news story. I think it was last night um, or something like that. I, I didn't even see it said, seen it and brought it to me. Um, and it was something along the lines of uh, what's the name? Bird box. The new, um, right. Oh fuck. What's her name now? Chick from Sandra speed. Bullock. Yeah. Sandra Bullock. Uh, it's her new movie where they got to be blindfolded for whatever reason. It's kind of like a thriller or horror movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it anyways. The headline was something along the lines of how bird, bird box is an analogy for white people not wanting to see racism. Now I'm not trying to get into race debates or any stupid shit like that on my channel right now, but I am going to say I grew up watching a man that jumped motorcycles for a living. His name was evil Knievel. You may have heard of him. He would be envious of the fucking jump that it would take to connect a Sandra Bullock movie to denying racism. Like, <laughs> holy fucking balls. What like, the that's fuck? Ridiculous. Like, Who comes I, up with this shit? It's gotta be a joke. I don't know what drugs that guy is on, but they should probably use them at the hospital to incapacitate people before surgery. What the fuck? I don't know. Yeah. If people come up with such dumb shit... To try and make connections and uh, click baby stuff. I'll never understand it, dude. Um, and Storm asks, uh, have myself or any of my friends played or heard of Red Storm 2 or Red Orchestra games? Games. I have that, seen that's, them. That's Rising Storm 2, by the way. Or, sorry, Rising Storm. Red Storm, I, yeah. Uh, I have seen them. I've never played them myself just because I'm not really into the whole first-person uh, multiplayer stuff. Um, but I have seen them. They look fairly cool. What about you guys? Have you ever, you guys ever played them? Um, I haven't, but I know Godette played Rising Storm 2 and some other people did. Apparently it's pretty good as a Vietnam game. Uh, it's a nice mix between realism and arcadey stuff. Hmm. I don't know how good it is now, but, um, Red Orchestra, that's old, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. I believe so. Game. Yeah. That's an old World War II shooter. I think I, mean, I played her... Rising Storm 2 once with Melius back in the day and it was just like super frustrating <laughs> so it's right. also on my older computer so it would just run in like crap but um i don't know it wasn't not really my thing but i've heard i've heard good reviews about it mm -hmm. um 
yeah, I personally haven't played them. Like I said, I'm just, I'm not really into that. I think the closest I would have played to any of that is squad, which I do appreciate it. It's just not something that I would play all the time. It's hard as um, fuck. That's why. <laughs> I mean, yes it's frustratingly no. hard. Squad, I more so, like, I like squad if I have enough of our guys with us. I can't exactly. deal, I can't oh, deal yeah. with the fucking retardation. But if, like, at one point in time, there was, I think, six or eight of us or something all together. And that wasn't bad. Like, I could, I could deal with that. Yeah. Um, oh, and real quick, I have to, uh, I have to give an update for you guys real quick. Uh, the PS4 did arrive. The I have the PS4 sitting here again, thanks to Nige. Uh, huge fucking props to Nige. He sent me this PS4 from the fucking UK, uh, sent it over to me. Uh, I have that sitting here. The capture card for the PC is on its way right now. It's currently fucking in transit. We'll be here next week. So, uh, probably late next week or the week after, uh, the PS4 streams will start. We're going to be playing, uh, until dawn and, uh, Red Dead Revolver 2. I actually have Red Dead Revolver or Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Jesus. Red Dead Revolver was the original. Fuck off. So no, it was it. I whatever. I have Red Dead Redemption <laughs> uh two sitting here right now. I have not touched it. It's like the biggest cock tease on the planet because it's just sitting here on top of the PS4 that is hooked up, ready to go, and I refuse to play it because I want to play it on stream for you guys. So that'll be starting next week or the week after. Um, hey, and speak of the fucking devil and the cocksucker will appear. Look at who just popped up in chat. Oh, a, wi a wild vertigo, a wild vertigo vert brother. Uh, I don't think you were here a little bit ago, but congratulations. You won a mouse. Uh, you will have a Corsair Schematar RGB gaming mouse uh, coming your way after the first. So I'm going to be shooting you a message on Twitch to get your email and get uh, information on wherever the fuck you want this thing sent to. And after the first, that'll be sent out to you. So be on the lookout for that message. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Also, uh, a Ron said that you could probably have one of your grandkids or somebody show you how to use it. So uh, you can commence to verbally berating him now for calling you old. Uh, all right, so goddamn, it's, we've been at it for two hours. Um, a lot of shit covered tonight. Uh, some cool stuff given away, uh, like almost a thousand dollars worth of shit given away to, tonight, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, any closing thoughts from uh, from you guys before we wrap it up? Uh, nope, nothing here. Just uh, thanks for having me part of the podcast. It was great to be here. Congratulations to everybody that won tonight. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for having me. I guess the one thing I'll say is Noise Guy said something about uh, using our mount tactics in Tarkov. I was literally thinking the same thing playing Star Citizen the other night. There's this one area where people like camp out at this one like drug lab place. But if we went in there with like a crew of 506 dudes on the ground, we would just, re we would just dominate. Yeah, not really. It, it's the. The thing you have to keep in mind is that the tactics that we train on is more specifically the tactics that I teach guys on are how to combat someone in a real life environment. That's not how someone plays in a video game. Like that's also true. When I you're PvP, the yeah, it's coordination not the same. and teamwork aspect. Of yeah, like know. that. That definitely helps. But people are much more brazen when it's a video game. Oh, right? So it's not doesn't really work yeah. quite the same. Um, all right. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for, I guess this year. Cause I, uh, I will see you guys again Sunday, but we will not have another podcast until after, uh, after the first. So that wraps it up for 2018 and I will see you guys this weekend for OSA and then Sunday for, uh, OSA as well, but also for the, uh, fun mission with Optray. Uh, but that's it for the War Games podcast tonight. Thank you guys a ton for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will see all of you beautiful bastards later.